Here we will draw a muscle stretch reflex. First draw one half of an axial cross section through the spinal cord. Then draw a lower extremity flexed at the knee and include both the extensor and flexor muscles. Next draw flexor and extensor motor neurons in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. Show an alpha motor nerve fiber project from each of them to the extensor and flexor muscles. Now draw a muscle spindle and show a type 1A sensory fiber project from it to the extensor motor neuron. Show that when the patellar tendon is activated, the muscle spindle sends an excitatory volley along the type 1A sensory afferent, which excites the extensor motor neuron and nerve, which causes the muscle extensor to contract and extend the knee. If the flexor muscles were simultaneously activated, the thigh would only stiffen and not move. So now draw a Renshaw cell, an interneuron, in the anterior horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord and show that when the Renshaw cell is activated, it inhibits the flexor motor neuron using the inhibitory neurotransmitter glycine. Now let's show how the muscle stretch reflex is terminated. Redraw our same arrangement, but exclude the flexor components and place the knee in extension. Then label a Golgi tendon organ where the quadriceps tendon inserts into the patella. Next show that a type 1B fiber projects from the Golgi tendon organ to the Renshaw interneuron. Now show an inhibitory fiber project from the interneuron to the extensor motor neuron. The type 1A and 1B fibers fire at the same rate, but the muscle spindle fibers have a much lower threshold to fire than the Golgi tendon organs. Thus, the muscle spindle fires first, and then later the Golgi tendon organ fires, which terminates the muscle stretch reflex. Finally, include in our diagram the corresponding spinal levels for the commonly tested muscle stretch reflexes. This concludes our diagram.